All right, so since I put together the Ultimate Marlin Model 60 project here, uh, I've been scouring the, the 22 Rimfire pages and a lot of the different 22 groups. Um, and because I've been getting more and more into this long range part of 22 Rimfire shooting, um, and I've seen a, something kind of consistent throughout all those groups, and it's people uh, saying that they're getting just as good of accuracy out of some sort of bulk pack ammo as they are out of some sort of match ammo and they're having a hard time justifying spending the money on match ammo when they can get just as good a results out of some sort of much cheaper bulk pack ammo which is completely understandable so because of that I wanted to do a test of a velocity test now we're not gonna be shooting for groups here um, I am gonna shoot groups downrange just to record the velocities um, but because we are not I'm gonna be shooting so many different types of ammo we're not seasoning the barrel between each one um, I want you to know that whatever groups we end up with are not really the best groups that that this rifle is going to be capable of obviously um, if you guys have any questions on that go back and look at the video we did not too long ago on seasoning your rimfire barrel to your ammo um, and that'll explain exactly what I'm talking about there but I wanted to see what types of consistent or how consistent the velocities might be in something like the 22 auto match or the Remington Thunderbolt in comparison to different types of match 22 ammo so we've got the Ely Edge We've got the Wolf Match Target. Now, I know you're thinking Wolf Wolf Ammo. That's uh, Wolf is typically known as being a much cheaper, uh, lower cost ammo. Well, the, one of the things that's very pr probably not very well known about this Wolf Match Target, this is a matter of fact, is Ely Ammo. This is produced in the Ely plant. It has an Ely stamp on it, um, on the box, and it has a Ely head stamp on the actual brass itself. So this is, by all intents and purposes, Ely ammo, um, just ma manufactured for Wolf. So we should, this is the first time I've even shot any of this, this uh, Wolf match, so I really have no idea what, I'm, what to expect with it. I picked some up on a whim, I saw some at a gun shop the other day. Um, then beyond that, we've got, our, we've got some match extra, so Ely Wolf match extra, so I'm assuming that is going to be uh, a higher grade of their match ammo, also from Ely. Um, We've got the Lapua Center X, and then something that I've always had really good luck with, and I've talked to a lot of other people who have really good luck with it as well, and that is CCI Standard Velocity. So we're going to run through all of these. We're going to do five shots of each. Uh, we're going to record the velocities, and then we're going to look at the extreme spreads between each of them, because when you're doing long-range shooting with a 22, or any type of long-range shooting, just like when we work up a load for our center fire rifles, um, one of the things we're looking at is what is our standard deviation and extreme spreads uh, between our groups so that we can have the lowest number possible. That way, our elevation stays fairly consistent. Um, the same thing is going to be true with 22, maybe even more so because there's such a huge arc uh, in the bullets, especially when you get out to long range. A, at 350 yards, you're looking at uh, a similar arc to something like me shooting my six Creedmoor at 1600 yards. So a, a very large swooping trajectory from the 22 ammo. And so a consistent velocity is going to be something that's fairly right, essential to that? having repeated accuracy at those distances. So let's do a full velocity test on all these. I have no idea what the results are going to be. I'm kind of excited to find out. Um, so here we go. Ah. 
Okay, here we go. Can So this is a pretty surprising result. This is absolutely not what I expected. Like I said in the beginning, um, these groups are not in, are not representative of what this rifle is actually capable of. If you guys have not seen any of the shooting we've done since we dropped it in the uh, Boyd's Rimfire Varmint stock here, uh, this thing shoots very consistent groups once you season the season the bullets to the barrel. Um, but obviously, we didn't have a chance to do that when we're just shooting five shots and moving on. So.
The velocity though is what we're absolutely looking at here and it was very surprising to see that there were some of these even bulk pack ammos that held their own uh, and even better in some cases than some of this match ammo that costs so much more. Um, so I may be actually starting to change my mind on my thoughts on some of this bulk pack ammo. So we'll talk more about that here in just a second. So first off, let's go through the data here. So with we started off Lapua Center X. So Lapua Center X, um, our highest velocity recording was 1,021 feet per second. Our lowest velocity recording was 1,000 feet per second. So that's a 21 feet per second extreme spread. So that's fairly standard, not a lot. It's going to be a fairly low standard deviation across five shots. Um, something that I would be totally comfortable with in shooting long range with it. And it actually, for, for what it was, for not being seasoned, it actually grouped fairly well. Um, next, we went to the Wolf Match Target. So the Wolf Match Target um, had a huge velocity stretch. I mean, it, I was really expecting much better from this, especially being coming from the Ely factory. Um, so it went from 1,029 feet per second being the lowest velocity we recorded to 1,069 feet per second, so a 40 feet per second extreme spread uh, on the Wolf Match target. So next we went to the Wolf Match Extra. The Wolf Match Extra we had from 1,025 feet per second being the lowest to 1,077 feet per second being the highest. So a 52 foot extreme spread, feet per second extreme spread uh, with the Wolf Match Extra. And I do believe that's actually supposed to be, uh, I, I know it's actually a little bit more expensive than the regular Wolf Match Target, so I was really surprised to see it actually perform more poor, poor, much more poorer, poorly than the actual Wolf Match Target. Um, so that was something that was kind of disappointing. As a matter of fact, when you get done going through these numbers, you'll see that actually the Wolf Match uh, Extra ended up being the worst in our velocity spread here. So it had the worst extreme spread of any of these that we tested. And it's supposed to be a match ammo. Um, Ely Edge. Ely Edge is something I've always had good luck with. Um, my rifle likes it quite a bit. Um, once you get it seasoned into the barrel, it shoots little bitty tiny groups. Um, so the Ely Edge, um, we had it going pretty good there for a second uh, with our lowest recording being 1,023 feet per second and then on the very last shot uh, it drops in at 1,053 feet per second so that gave us a 30 foot extreme spread but up until that point um, it was only by looking at it it was only a 12 feet per second spread up until that point I'm sorry nine feet per second spread so um, you might want to throw that one out as a flyer uh, but either way it did drop it that 1,053 feet per second shot, uh, which absolutely expanded our extreme spread by a large amount. So we got a 30 feet per second extreme spread with the Ely Edge. Um, and that is not Ely's top of the line ammo, but it is a one of their more expensive ammos. Um, and as much as you pay for it, it would be nice to have a really consistent velocity across all of, across all of your shots. So Next, we went to the Federal Auto Match. So the Federal Auto Match, this is something that I've always had really good luck with. Um, I don't shoot a lot of it, especially at the longer range shots with the 22, because it is a, a high velocity round. It actually goes much, much higher than the speed of sound. Um, and if you guys know anything about rimfire, long range rimfire, um, typically, the principles always have been that you don't want to break the sound barrier and have to come back through in that transonic barrier um, to disrupt your trajectory, which can happen depending on the bullet. But I've honestly shot the when I did the uh, 350 yard golf ball challenge with the with the uh, Marlo, Ultimate Marlin Model 60 here. I was using Ely um, Ely Force, which is their high velocity match ammo. I always got really consistent results out of that. Um, but as you guys saw, it had no issues uh, being extremely consistent at those distances at 350 yards, enough to hit a golf ball. So um, I've started to kind of wonder if that is actually true. I don't know where the, the barrier is there to be too fast on your velocity to come back through and completely ruin your trajectory. But that's something we'll have to test more in the future. Um, so with the Federal Auto Match, we had our highest shot, our lowest shot recorded was 1,193 feet per second, and our highest shot recorded was 1,220 feet per second. So a 27 feet uh, extreme spread with the Federal Match or Federal Auto Match. Um, I mean, it does say match on the box. Uh, 
I don't know. I mean, obviously with the price point that these come in, they're fairly fairly inexpensive. Uh, uh, under twenty dollars a box, three hundred twenty-five. So for that price, I didn't expect them to perform as well as they did, uh, but was very surprised at how absolutely consistent they were. And twenty-seven feet per second is a fairly large extreme spread, um, more than I would really prefer. With any of these, actually, all of these actually had more than I would prefer, but. In the grand scheme of things it's actually not bad at all um, next we went to the Remington Thunderbolt now out of the bulk pack ammo this was the worst one um, our highest shot record our lowest shot recorded was 1166 feet per second our highest shot was 1216 feet per second so a 50 feet per second extreme spread um, not that is a pretty large extreme spread but even less than the wolf match extra so that really goes along with the fact that maybe some of these bulk pack ammos, if you can find one that prints really tight groups for you and then you chrono it and it's getting within these types of ranges of velocities, um, it may be just as good for you as spending the extra money on match ammo. So this is something that, these are results I absolutely did not expect and was extremely surprised when I started seeing how these things were performing. Um, the last one we tested was something that I actually expected to do very well and it did not disappoint. Um, so we actually had tied for our lowest extreme spread with the Lapua Center X uh, was the CCI standard velocity. CCI standard velocity has been a staple in 22 Rimfire for quite a while. Um, as a matter of fact, this first group that I shot here, it was not a, it was pretty it was not something that I've ever seen this rifle shoot with these CCI standard velocities. So just to prove my point on the seasoning of the barrel, um, because I did not clean the barrel between different am between ammo changes, um, it took quite a few to really get this barrel seasoned. But I went through, and we'll show you here, I shot five different, or I'm sorry, six more five shot groups after that, with each one of these groups tightening up more and more um, across all six groups. With the, with the last group being a fairly tight group. So that just goes to show um, that you are absolutely getting better. The, the more you season that barrel um, to a certain point, you're getting a much, you're getting much higher accuracy. So that, I just did that to prove the point. We'll throw that in here so you guys can see that as we went along, the accuracy did tighten up, um, but really impressed. The highest or the lowest shot recorded with the CCI standard uh, was 11, or 1,076 feet per second and the highest shot recorded was 1,097 feet per second. So we're actually right on the edge of that uh, of the transonic barrier. So this actually may be a very good with those low numbers of extreme spreads and with the fact that they're right at the high end of the transonic barrier, it may be an excellent bullet um, to shoot out to those further distances, um, considering you've got low number, low extreme spreads and higher velocities, but still being underneath that transonic barrier. So that was something that didn't disappoint, and it actually exceeded my expectations. So all in all, uh, this these were surprising results. Um, I honestly was not expecting any of this. I was expecting the match ammo to absolutely. Uh, outperform the bulk pack ammo in every way and that was absolutely not the case so maybe what these maybe what I'm reading on these forums absolutely is true um, these are why this is why I like to test these things for myself so I hope this was helpful to you guys so I would honestly say if there's something if, if you have a bulk pack ammo that shoots absolutely lights out in your rimfire match rifle um, maybe that's uh, the one you should go with especially if it's a much lower cost than spending the extra money on match ammo. And I will be now testing out a bunch of different bulk pack ammos um, to see if I can get similar results to some of these match ammos um, for a much cheaper price because I'm always looking to save money. Um, Beyond that, you will see a full review coming of the Boyd's Rimfire Varmint stock here in the near future. Um, really happy with this thing. I've uh, got a lot of good things to say about this. Boyd's did an excellent job of designing this stock to uh, be extremely ergonomic. And with the things that we're doing with it, it goes a long way to help with that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I'll see you guys next time. I'm out.